Welcome back. A few months ago, banks in Hong Kong introduced the Certificate of Deposit for retail investors. And producer Dickie Sin finds out that because of today's low interest environment, it's going over pretty well. Uh, probably more likely to put it in the bank um, into a short-term fixed interest account, something that's fairly safe and secure. At this present moment, I still put it, prefer to put it in the bank um, until I find some more um, interesting um, uh, returns that would attract me. <laughs> the property market's not so attractive. Our stock market's very volatile. About $3 trillion are tucked away in savings accounts in Hong Kong right now, and with investors jittery about where to put their money, banks are offering a safe, if not high-yield, alternative, the Certificate of Deposit, or CD. In a low interest rate environment, and also uh, the increasing awareness of our customers to diversify the portfolio, um, we've seen increasing demand from the customers to look for a relatively low risk instrument and it's proving to be quite popular. An estimated total of about $8 billion of CDs have been issued so far this year. Every time a bank comes out with a new issue, it's oversubscribed. If you can put your money in a bank, then, you know, it's the same as putting your money in a certificate of deposit because it's the same risk in terms of the credit. A certificate of deposit carries a fixed interest rate and two maturity dates. It's like a time deposit, except that the investment period is longer and the interest rate is higher. The minimum denomination of a CD, depending on the bank, is $50,000 or $100,000. The investment period is normally four to five years. Right now, the interest rate is fixed at about 3% a year for the first two to three years. It's paid either quarterly or semi-annually. The customer can cash in the CD at the first maturity date, usually after two years, or roll it over. The interest rate then goes up to 5% a year until the next maturity date, usually another two to three years. If a customer finds he does need the money before the maturity date, he can get it back. So it's supposed to be there for five year or three year, whatever the maturity is. If you want to get your money back because you need the money, you can redeem it or you can sell it back to the bank. The bank will pay your price, but it may not be rather 100%. With some banks, CD holders don't even have to cash in. They're already offered a line of credit on their certificates at current prime interest rates. Uh, we offer 90% financing on the certificate of deposit that we issue. Um, so customer can, in fact, on day one, they can even have a line already in place um, so that in case they need money, can, they can simply draw on the line rather than, you know, worrying about breaking the certificate of deposit. The only risk with the certificate of deposit is that if interest rates do rise during the lifetime of the deposit, the customer may find himself with a relatively low rate of return compared to the market. The expectation is that interest rate would not move so high so fast and therefore investors would still gain by placing their money in the certificate of deposit rather than just purely on deposit. For the banks, it's a way of getting long-term funds. In the past, we used to issue public floating rate certificate of deposit which are really issued to other banks, you know, for other institutional investors. Um, but we have increasingly been um, you know, asked by retail customers who want something that they can also put their money in long term. Um, so we came out with these uh, callable CDs. While a CD is less risky, with a guaranteed rate of return, bankers will always tell investors not to put all their eggs in one basket. The customer has to consider CD in the context of the overall portfolio mix whether it's system in terms of the uh, liquidity, the tenure, and so on. Um, CD is a relatively low-risk instrument, but still we have to pay attention to the credit rating of the issuer, uh, the yield, uh, the terms and tenure uh, of the CDs which are uh, being issued. Basing, Bank, IBA, and Fortis all have new issues available for subscription this week. Now Money Magazine continues its trek through the mainland province of Jilin known as the Golden Corn Belt of China. It's been experiencing bumper crops recently. The only problem is, 
people are eating less of the stuff. So the province is looking at ways to use the surplus. Alongside the highways of Jilin province are fields of maize. Jilin produces more maize than any other province in China and the volume has been steadily rising in the past 20 years. In the early 80s, production reached 5 million tons a year and exceeded 19 million tons by 1998. Jilin grows maize, but they're not for the people to eat. It's for the security of the country's food supply. Our country has a large population. We can't rely solely on imports to keep our food security. Jilin province has long been known as the Golden Corn Belt, where 13 counties have a total of 31 million moos of farmland used to grow maize, producing an average 15 million tons every year. Only 13% of it is for food. As the standard of living improves, people eat less and less corn. But at the same time, there's been a bumper maize harvest in almost each of the last few years. So the province has a record stockpile of maize. But maize can only be stored for up to three years. After that, the maize will be useless. The surplus becomes waste. Jilin authorities are trying to solve the problem by research into other economic uses for maize. Maize does have a wide range of uses. It can be processed into cornstarch or other non-staple foods. Or glucose can be extracted from it to produce syrup for soft drinks. It can also be used as feed for cattle and horses or refined into alcohol to produce industrial fuel. A ton of maize costs 1,000 yuan on the mainland nowadays. Processed maize can cost five times more. This maize processing factory can turn 650,000 tons of maize into starch each year. Its annual production is valued up to 5.1 billion yuan. Over the past four years, it's generated about 50 million US dollars worth of exports. Most of it is starch because 70% of maize is starch. But the market price of cornstarch has plunged in recent years from 3,300 yuan a ton in 1996 to about 1,400 yuan per ton now. So more ways of making use of maize are being explored. One of them is extracting the glucose. As Chinese people's living standards improve, demand is growing for soft drinks. So demand for sugar is rising sharply. Most American soft drinks, like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, use flavoring made from corn sugar. Extractions from maize have their economic values. So do the dregs from the extractions themselves. The production process leaves dregs and waste. They contain rich organic material. We can make use of this material to produce organic fertilizers for the agricultural industry. A few years ago, Jilin authorities promoted environmentally friendly agriculture. This compound fertilizer is a green product. China's National Bureau of Statistics says compound fertilizers now command a 10% market share. Besides being used in fertilizer, maize can also be processed into animal feed. This group has formed a joint venture with a Thai company to turn maize into feed, producing over 600,000 tons annually. This year, the company signed orders with 570,000 farming families to purchase from them about 7 million tons of maize for processing. This has helped raise the farmers' income. Farmers also realize they can earn more if they produce maize with a high level of oil, starch and sugar content. Like last year, we cooperated with the U.S. to introduce a new type of maize. We asked farmers to work with us and the price of maize has increased by 50 cents. And a factory that will make ethanol from maize is being built here. The annual production volume can reach 600,000 tons. Ethanol has various purposes. It can be used for industrial raw materials, solvents and alcoholic drinks.
The largest market for ethanol is as an additive in gasoline. The common ratio is one part ethanol to nine parts gasoline. Ethanol is one type of oxygenate that can increase the, the octane number of the gasoline. As well, it can improve the combustion efficiency so that it can uh, com combust more completely and also it can reduce pollutants such as carbon monoxide and toxic hydrocarbons. So the addiction of uh, ethanol in the gasoline can have many benefits uh, in, in the environmental aspect. Dr. Lan says ethanol is a renewable fuel, also a substitute for gasoline. If ethanol becomes widely used on the mainland, the environment can be protected and hefty sums saved on importing petroleum. Local economies can get a boost with increased agricultural production and more job opportunities. With its intrinsic industrial and agricultural values, maize could give traditional agriculture a new lease to life. And that's Money Magazine for this week. Thanks for joining us. Good night.